Well, I think winter has finally arrived. It's pouring down rain out. It's been raining all day yesterday, all day today, and I don't think it's ever going to stop. But the nice thing is it, it turns everything nice and green. So I thought I would do <laughs> the mere minutes in front of the rain. Uh, I want to go over a few things about the uh, ornaments, the little snowflakes. Here's my second one that I did. I actually, sh when I, in the video, I was showing cutting on both of these, and I just haven't sliced this one up yet, but that's kind of what it's going to look like. One thing I've learned about these is that you should really sand these grooves before you assemble it. I think that would be a lot easier, <laughs> especially on these, these little circle pieces like there. They, they get uh, you know, fibers of wood in there. So anyways, I need to sand that ahead of time. If I were going to make a lot of these, I would set up a different system on my bandsaw for slicing these up. I was just kind of holding them by hand and, and sending them through, which probably isn't that accurate. But they turned out pretty nice. What Dwayne does, because again, he makes bazillions of these things and, and sells them all over the place, and he makes pretty good, uh, pretty good income off of these things because it hardly costs anything to make them. And I think he sells them for like two bucks a piece or something for the snowflakes. People just love them. But uh, what he does is he's got a separate sled that he's made for his bandsaw. A kind of like a, a deli meat slicer, you know, that you can just run him through and slice him up. And then what he does is when it gets down toward the end, he grabs, I guess, the next log that he's going to cut up and just hot glues it to that one and then just <laughs> keeps working. So, uh, you know, you keep your fingers out of the way. That's a really efficient way to do it. And uh, if you make a lot of these, sanding really becomes important. And so what Dwayne has also done is he set up a special dedicated uh, sanding station so that on his, I guess it's on his drill press where he just, it's a little box that holds them in there so he can just sand them all one after another. One other thing I wanted to reiterate is that when you are making these and setting them up, that 30 degree angle is really critical. Uh, if you're slightly off, these just won't match up. So that's why I bought the 30, 60, 90 triangle, that plastic triangle. I had a hard time finding that, believe it or not. I, I looked at a lot of places. I ended up getting it at Staples, an office supply store. I don't know why they had it. An art store. I went to an art store. They didn't have them. So there you go. Uh, but I did find out that the 30 degree mark on my table saw was actually pretty accurate. But the problem is there that the, the thickness of that 30 degree line, you know, you, you could be slightly off that way. And finally, Dwayne also makes 3D versions of these. Well, I guess they are all 3D. They have a thickness to them, but you know what I mean. He, he takes two of them and then hooks them together this way somehow. Uh, so that's a cool idea. It makes you know, nicer Christmas ornaments that way. But I think just slicing these up and I, you know what I think would be really neat to do with these is you, as you wrap a, a gift for Christmas, you tie a bow on it and then you tie one of those, uh, one of those snowflakes on it. So then, you know, it's decorative and then they get an ornament for their tree also. <laughs> It's Saturday now. I shot that last part yesterday, but I wanted to add a little bit more. It's still raining out. Did you see, notice that? <laughs> it's kind of drizzly out now, but it's never going to stop. I wanted to add a little bit more about slicing these up because a, a number of people have asked me about if there's another way to do it if you don't have a bandsaw. And I think, actually, this would be a good project to use a, uh, a handsaw for, especially if you could just make up a small little box, kind of like a, a miter box or something, and just cut through them because once you have all the shape made, there's not a lot of wood you actually need to cut through and I think that that would be certainly an easy way to do it. You could probably do this on a table saw if you ran it through a sled, but you, I don't think you could get your blade high enough so you'd have to probably do one pass and then another pass and, and it would be kind of hokey. But no matter how you do it, I mean on my bandsaw, I get the bandsaw marks, but you know sanding it goes pretty easily on these. So I think a, a lot of making these is just about the sanding.